Lamed Vav, a collection of the favorite stories of Rabbi Shlomo Kalibach. One last chance. Imagine for a moment that you are sitting in a room and there's a very bad smell. Completely turns you off, right? But if you sit there long enough, you get so used to the odour that it no longer bothers you. It's the same thing on a spiritual level. We can reach the point where we no longer know the difference between the sweet fragrance of good and the rancid stench of evil. We've grown so accustomed to the foul smells of this world, we don't even notice them anymore. The Holy Rebbe Naftali Rapshitsa was at one time a follower of Rabbi Mordechai of Neshiz. Now, every good chassid always wanted to spend the holidays with his rabbi. So the Rav Shitzah liked to go to the Neshitza for all the Yomim Tovim. But one year, as Rabbi Naftali prepared to leave after Purim, Rabbi Mordechai called him over and said, Do me a favour. Don't come back for Pesach. The Rapshitsa was appalled not to be with his Rebbe for Passover. Impossible. But since Pesach was still four weeks away, he knew he had time to figure out a way to be invited back for the holiday. Rabbi Naftali thought and thought and finally came up with a plan. A few days before Pesach, he returned to Nishiz and went straight to the kitchen to help Rabbi Mordechai's Rebetzin because he knew that thousands of people would be coming to the Nishitza for Passover and the Rebetzin could use all the help she could get. The Rapshitza made himself absolutely indispensable to Rabbi Mordechai's wife. Then, after working for several days, he said to her, I've been so happy helping you, and I can't stop thinking about how special, how exalted Pesach will be here in Nishiz. I just wish I could stay to celebrate it with you. The Rebbitson was surprised. What are you talking about? You're always here for the holidays. Well, this year your holy husband, my Rebbe, made it clear he doesn't want me around. But let me tell you, I'll really miss being with him. It's so important to me. Do you think maybe you could? The Rebbitson took the hint and asked Rabbi Mordechai to let the Rapshitsa stay for Pesach. I mamash need Rabbi Naftali. He's such a help to me. She begged and pleaded until finally the Nishitsa had to relent. All right, enough already. If it means so much to you, he can stay. But I'm warning you, he's going to make a lot of trouble for me. The morning before Passover, the whole community of Neshiz burned all their leftover bread to fulfill the mitzvah of removing and destroying all their chametz before the start of the festival. But you know, before Pesach, 
we're not just burning bread. We're wiping out evil from the world and from inside ourselves. We're cleaning out the deepest depths of our being. After all the chametz was destroyed, the rupshits have felt completely cleansed. So he went to the base midrash to learn. He was totally engrossed in his sefer when suddenly his nose began to twitch. The most terrible odor was seeping into the room. Then the door to the beat midrash burst open and a schlepper came in. He was ragged and filthy, but worst of all, he mamash smelled awful. The holy Rapshitzer was proud of his ability to tell the difference between a good smell and a bad one, and to him, this man reeked of pure evil. Rabbi Naftali thought he must have already committed just about every sin in the world and was eager to do the few remaining Averis he might have missed. The Schlepper came over to Rabbi Naftali and said, I've come to see the Rebbe. Ed Mamash took all of the Rapshitz's strength not to hold his nose against the man's stench. He thought, there's no way I'll allow this person in to see my Rebbe. The holy Neshitza just cleansed himself and the whole world of every trace of evil. And now, this repulsive schlepper wants to defile him with his very presence. No way. So he said to the visitor, I refuse to take you to the Rebbe in the condition you're in. You stink of sin. You're mamash disgusting. Go home and wash yourself. Burn your chametz and do tshuva. Repent for all your wrongdoings. Then maybe come back. But the way you are now, how could you have the chutzpah to think of disturbing the holy Nishitza? Without another word, the schlepper turned around and walked out of the Beit Midrash. And the Rapshitza went back to his learning, promptly forgetting about the whole incident. A few minutes later, the door to the Beit Midrash flew open again and Rabbi Mordechai Neshitza ran into the room. Did anyone just come in here? He asked the Rapshitza breathlessly. He seemed very anxious, but Rabbi Naftali didn't notice. He answered carelessly, No, at least not anybody worth mentioning. The Neshitza looked at him angrily. I didn't ask you if anyone was here who you thought was worth knowing. I asked you, and I'm asking you again, did anyone, anyone at all, just come into this Beit Midrash? The Rapshitza still didn't get it. He said, well, now that you mention it, there was this awful schlepper who had the most terrible odour, really such a disgusting person. Rabbi Mordechai was mamash beside himself. Gewalt! I knew this would happen if I let you stay. What did you do? What was I supposed to do? I couldn't let such a low person in to see you. I threw him out. The Neshitza's face flushed red with rage. 
and his voice quivered with anger. He looked the Rakshita right in the eye and said, If you don't find that man and bring him back to me, I never want to see you again. The Rakshita couldn't understand what was happening. All he'd done was try to protect the holy Nishitsa. So what had he done wrong? But he couldn't bear the thought of losing his Rebbe. So he dashed out of the Bemidrash and ran all over the city looking for the Schlepper. Finally he found him in the local tavern, drunk. The man looked and smelled worse than ever. But this time, Rabbi Naftali spoke to him with utmost respect, as if he were the holiest person in the world. My sweetest friend, please forgive me for the way I treated you before. I was so absorbed in my learning. I wasn't really paying attention. Please come back with me now to the home in the Shitsa. I'll personally take you to see him. But the Schlepper didn't even look at him. He didn't want anything to do with someone who had insulted him so terribly. And he wasn't about to go anywhere with the Rapshitzer. So he completely ignored him and went on with his drinking. So Rabbi Naftali tried again. Listen, my dear Yid, let me tell you the truth. The Heiliger Rabbi Mordechai really wants to see you, and he's so angry with me for kicking you out. If I don't bring you to him, he'll never speak to me again. So I'm mamash begging you, please come back with me. But the Schlepper wouldn't budge. The Rapshitsa had no choice. He picked the Yiddler up and carried him over his shoulder all the way back to the Nishitsa. Rabbi Mordechai was overjoyed to see the Schlepper. He hugged and kissed him, saying, Where have you been? I've been waiting for you, Gavalt. I'm so happy to see you. Suddenly he remembered that the Rapshitsa was also standing there. But if Rabbi Naftali expected the Rebbe to thank him for bringing the Yidla back, he was sadly mistaken. Rabbi Mordechai dismissed him curtly. You can go now. Then he put his arm around the Schlepper and led him into his house. All of Pesach, Rabbi Mordechai was cold and distant to the to the Rapshitsa. But the Schlepper was always at the Rebbe's side, and he looked like a new man. He was fresh and clean. He was wearing a new Bekesha, a new robe, and a new strimal, and he was Mama shining from one end of the world to the other. After the holiday, the Nishitsa called the Rapshitsa into his private room. It's time I explain things to you, he said. You see, this man was not always a disgusting schlepper. Once he was one of my top students. What a level he was on in his learning, his midot, his davening. He could have been a great rebbe. Still... He was only human, like all of us, and sadly enough, he once made a big mistake. He knew I was aware of what he'd done, and was too ashamed to face me. So he left Neshitz without a word, and could never muster up the courage to come back. And after that, for him, it was just downhill 
all the way. Time went by, but I never stopped thinking about this student. So on Purim I davened all day that Hashem should bring him back. The Rebona Shalolam had mercy on me, and I saw prophetically that he'd come on the day before Pesach. But I also saw that you would be learning in the Beit Midrash when he arrived, and that you would throw him out. I knew that when this man decided to come to see me, he considered it his last chance. He thought, if the Holy Rebbe accepts me without saying anything about what I did, that will be my sign that my sin has been forgiven in heaven and I will stay in the shits. But if his chassidim judge me harshly and send me away, I'll know that heaven still considers me guilty. Then I'll leave Neshitz and never come back. That's why I told you not to come here for Pesach. I wanted you out of the way. And now you know, Naftali Rapshitzer. You were so quick to judge that you almost robbed this man of the chance God gave him to become whole again. Gewalt. We always have to be so careful. Many times we meet people and we don't like how they look. We don't like how they smell. We want to turn them away. But instead we have to welcome everyone with an open heart. My sweetest friend, I'm so glad to see you. Because when you meet somebody, you never know. It may be his last try. It may be his last chance to come back.